Okay, so one more example here on instantaneous rate. And so we've got a particle that moves along a straight line, and its position is given by the function p equals t squared minus 6t plus 8, where p is in meters and t is in seconds. We want to figure out when the velocity of this particle will equal 60 meters per second. And also, we want to know when is the particle at rest. Well, again, since we're given position, uh, to find information about the velocity, we have to find the derivative. So we'll use our definition. So we've got the limit as h approaches 0. And what we'll have to do is everywhere, again, that there's a t, we'll replace that with t plus h. So we'll have t, t plus h squared minus 6 times t plus h plus 8. And then we have to subtract away the original function. So t squared minus 6t plus 8. And then all of that will be divided by h. So again, it's just a matter now of expanding the numerator and collecting like terms. So t plus h times t plus h squared, that's going to be t squared plus 2t times h plus h squared. And then we'll get uh, negative 6t minus 6h when we distribute, plus 8. And then when we distribute our negative sign, well, we'll have negative t squared plus 6t minus 8 all over h. And now, again, the same thing as the other examples. We'll cancel out our like terms. So t squared and negative t squared. We've got negative 6t and positive 6t. We've got a positive 8 and a negative 8. So to me, it looks like we're left with the 2th plus h squared minus 6h. Well, I'm going to factor an h out of the numerator. So h times 2t would give me 2th. h times positive h would give me my h squared. And then I guess we would need h times negative 6 to get our negative 6h. And again, we're still just dividing by h. So if we cancel, cancel, and now we can plug in h equals 0. That'll leave us with 2t plus 0 minus 6. Or we'll get our derivative, so p prime of t. But again, since uh, our derivative is the derivative of position, we can also call this the velocity function. So it says the velocity at any time t will be 2t minus 6. All right, so. Let's go back and see what they actually wanted us to do. So we want to figure out when the velocity equals 30 meters per second and when the velocity um, is, at, is zero, right? If the velocity is zero, that's when the particle would be at rest. So part A, um, we'll just take our velocity function and set that equal to 30, okay? Um, and now all we have to do is just solve for t. So we can add 6 to both sides. That'll give us 2t equals 36. And then we can divide both sides by 2, and we'll get t equals 18. So again, let's, uh, let's see. Uh, this was in seconds. So after um, 18 seconds, that's when the particle will be traveling at a rate of 30 meters per second. For part b, if we want to figure out when the particle is at rest, well, the particle is going to be at rest when the velocity equals 0. So we can just add 6, divide both sides by 2, and we'll get t equals 3. So after 3 seconds, that's when our particle would be at rest.